r slash out of the loop. Routine underscore page 2392 says. What's going on with the right now being against Ukraine? When the war started, public opinion at least in the West, was mostly in Ukraine's favor, including on the right. While I expected the media attention, and fawning over political leaders, to die down that's how the news cycle works I didn't expect there, to be a complete 180 to conservative slash the right now supporting Russia and hating Ukraine. And it's not just a general we shouldn't spend money on foreign conflicts, let's keep the money for us kind of position, but a pretty strong constant vilification and derision of Ukraine and support for Russia. What happened? The current thing now is to blame Ukraine for this damn destruction, even when the evidence currently supports Russia being behind it, I believe. The Bertinator 3000 says. Answer, there is still widespread bipartisan support for Ukraine, despite what Tucker Carlson and a few comments on this post, would have you believe. Republicans in Congress, are still very much supporting Ukraine. It's not mainstream in either party, currently, to side with Russia, even though we have seen some pretty crazy hot takes out of a few prominent conservatives. I do not think this is at a point where we have to worry about it as a mainstream issue, currently. Maybe it will get there, eventually, but it hasn't so far. The weird hot takes have been floating around for a long time, but not really taking off. Edit, I'm not going to wade into debates with everyone who mentions Republicans who don't support Ukraine. Some of those points are right, even. What I will say, is to look at the votes on every aid package that goes through Congress. The Republican votes are still very much there. And look at how little real pushback pretty much anyone in office, is providing on further support for Ukraine. What minor comments congress people have made, is if I nothing compared to how much they shout, and complain about other issues, I can't say what things will look like if Trump, or DeSantis wins the presidency. But, for now, there's definitely still strong bipartisan support for Ukraine throughout congress. KingDav97 says. Answer, it's a mix of contrarianism and isolationism. It's also a small minority of somewhat vocal figures, and not the right wholesale. Most Republicans and writers still support Ukraine as seen by the overwhelming bipartisan support on all the aid packages. Doma 2012 says. Question, you mention, a pretty strong constant vilification and derision of Ukraine and support for Russia do you have any examples of the support for Russia part? I haven't seen a lot of conservatives or the right supporting Russia. What I have seen, though, is any criticism of Ukraine's government, skepticism of the appropriateness of the US's involvement in this conflict, or observations that NATO expansion might have made Russia feel defensive labeled as support for Russia. But to answer your question, the constant strawmaning of intervention skepticism or NATO criticism as Russian apologia or Russian propaganda has made a lot on the right, become more skeptical of the narrative being painted about this whole conflict, NATO, and Ukraine. Lord Fluffy says. Answer, in addition to the other comments, the part of the party that supports Trump, has crafted a narrative in which Biden has been using Ukraine to launder the money he's allegedly gotten from shady dealings, which is then funneled through China, and back into pockets. It's nonsensical, but it fits their preconceptions. C322617 says. Answer, I'm a conservative who has consistently been pro-Ukraine, as have many others. Neither side of the aisle is a monolith. So let me peel back the curtain, to give you some of the diversity of opinion of some of the stances on Ukraine I've encountered among my fellow conservatives. Among the more establishment conservatives, especially many former Neocons, the prevailing sentiment is pretty similar to that of many establishment liberals. They view the conflict as a morally simplistic issue of a pro-democratic state being unjustifiably invaded by an authoritarian state, and believe it is a duty to defend Ukraine. Full stop. Among fiscal conservatives and the more libertarian crowd, they believe the Russian invasion to be unjustified, and are generally sympathetic towards Ukraine, but do not believe it to be our problem, and are deeply concerned about irresponsible and largely unaccountable spending, 
particularly going into a country with as much political corruption as Ukraine. There are also some in this camp who believe that our involvement risks dragging us into a direct conflict with Russia. As one approaches the fringe right, I've heard some opinions that either view both Russia and Ukraine as untrustworthy and r slash out of the loop. Kevin W says. What's going on with PGA merging with Live Golf? I don't really follow golf all that much, and don't know much about Live Golf. What is going on, and why is there a lot of controversy around this merger? Hustle Rocket says. Answer, the Sodas wanted to invest in the PGA Tour and were rejected, so they started their own tour, Live, and paid a lot more money to those golfers. The Live Tour was drawing few fans, and couldn't get any decent TV coverage and the PGA Tour couldn't pay that kind of money, so they decided it was in both their interest, to combine the tours along with the European Tour. The general consensus is the Sordis ultimately got what they want. Kitchen Reflection 52 says. Looks like money can buy anything in boys playground. Too bad the world has become rich boys playground. Red and Tinghood says. Answer, Liv sprung up as a competitor to the PGA. Liv is backed by the Saudi government. When the tour was announced, multiple golfers were offered contracts to come play for Liv, with Tiger being offered nearly $1 billion. Some guys jumped shipped, while others stayed with the PGA. This all happened, while the players were negotiating with PGA for better compensation etc for the lower tier players, among other compensation issues. Anyways, PGA sold its players on holding the line, not giving in to Saudi blood money, big company guys, and so on. And many did. PGA also said they would never merge. Now the merger has happened, with the PGA holding the majority interest. Notably they did not tell the players this was happening. If you're a PGA player, you were lied to, and caught completely unaware, finding out about the merger on Twitter. You also lost out on upwards of hundreds of millions of dollars in contract money from Liv, only to end up back in the same place. Bed Spillor says. Answer, Liv Golf is a new golf league that is basically controlled by the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is known for human rights violations and the prince is suspected to have played a major role in the assassination of journalist Jamal Khashoggi and gave Jad Kushner, Donald Trump's son-in-law, $2 billion for investments it's suspected that due to Kushner's proximity to the former president and not his investment acumenies, why they invested with him. In addition, 50 northern 19 terrorists that hijacked four planes during 9-11 and murdered thousands were Saudi nationals and the US found evidence that Saudi Arabian officials funded them. Per the article, the PGA was sued when they banned players who participated in live golf events for antitrust practices by live. Donald Trump also supports live golf by hosting some of their events at his courses. The controversy is that how can the historically American PGA merge with Saudi Arabian live golf and still claim to be supportive of American interests? The answer is, and always will be money. PGA likes money. R slash out of the loop. Block of Diamond says. What's the deal with Pad Robertson, who is he, and why are people celebrating his demise? Link. Infamal Sprode says. Answer, Pat Robertson can arguably be called the first real televangelist, having founded the Christian Broadcasting Network so long ago that satellite TV wasn't even a thing, let alone the internet. In the late 1970s, Robertson was a founder of the John Birch Society-funded movement to persuade Baptists, and Protestants in general, to vote Republican, along with fellow evangelist Sorrel Robertson Jerry Falwell, lobbyist Jack Abramoff, and filmmaker-slash-fundraiser Frank Schieffer Jr. Originally named the Moral Majority, we now know it, just as the religious right. So what some people are straight up celebrating is the death of another of the original founders of the right-wing fundamentalist movement in America. Hangra Hayax says. Simply calling him a founder of the right-wing fundamentalist movement leaves out, hopefully unintentionally, so much of why he was such a vile human 
and makes it sound like people are just glad another famous Christian died. The guy celebrated AIDS as a divine punishment on people he thought had no right to exist, homosexual population, he blamed Katrina on abortion, and 9 over 11, again, on gay people. Oh, and he exploited people to rake in a fortune. He was a heinous, absolutely horrible person. SSJX7 School says. Answer, basically a televangelist who used his platform to spread his own flavor of Christianity which was founded mostly on hate and fear. The evangelical base in the United States was drafted after him pretty much. You can blame a lot of the proliferation of fear mongering and homophobia in the Republican Party on him. He also used his platform to become very wealthy. Honestly he was a hateful man. Fun underscore explanation underscore 3417 says. Answer, he was an elder dinosaur who used Jesus as a cover to attack anyone who aren't straight, white, and to the right. People are celebrating the demise of a hypocritical jerk who encouraged millions to embrace hatred over kindness and who profited heavily off of people's fear of hell. Some people are probably sad about his passing, I'm not. Successful underscore page 9689 says. Answer, Pat Robertson was a minister who did a lot of his preaching over television airways through the show The 700 Club. This shows consistent presence in broadcasting space, along with some controversies that other hosts had, has made it one of the most recognizable pieces of Christian religious TV, even to non-viewers. And Pat Robertson had controversial views, by any standard. He claimed to personally converse with God, and reports on his conversations with God, as if they were conducted over dollar store walker talkies. As such, he makes some wild predictions which he later claims to have misheard slash read the signs of. And while controversial, Robertson was very influential, and worked hard to expand his influence in evangelical Christianity, the media, and the Republican Party. His death is seen by opponents of his views as the cessation of a mouthpiece who they have long worked against. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.